I think we'll go. Everyone okay? They've come back slowly. It's nice. Right. Nice experience. <coughs> Very nice. Okay. That's good. <coughs> Bless. Do you need some water or you're, you're okay with the throat there? Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Throat there. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. All right. So once again, just a nice overview there with the healing energies and just raising your consciousness and connecting to realms and energies so that you're connected and that brings us um, in I suppose more integration with our higher selves and our potential that we can be as as instruments not just of psychic ability of healing abilities because you'll get called to go into certain areas in this work you might be a you know a manager you might be a, you know a curator you might be a nurse you might be any of these beings but once again having these uh, attributes awaken in you you can choose where you wish to go as it were with that which brings us into our little um aspect we're going to talk about um crystals and um uh, some of their uh, attributes and properties okay so we do have them as a fact for um, their, their aids. They're like tools that we take with us. Like, for example, a crystal reader might use a crystal ball, as it were. And that's quartz crystal. Now, quartz is a very intelligent stone. It's not by accident that we use it in our laptops and our tablets and our phones, our iPhones and androids and so on and so forth because quartz crystal holds memory all right and it grows in a particular you know, a specific particular shape which is the hex the hexagon or the hexagram and that seems to be a very prevalent crystalline structure in most of nature as it were. There are flowers that grow on hexaline structures as well. And of course, there's other things that we can get into, but we're not doing a jewelry course here today. So I'll just cover this as best I can. So stones have living consciousness. They hold memory, okay, like your mind. And that's where we get back. We went to the absolute ancient, rawest, rawest part of our teaching would be the emerald tablets of Thoth, okay? Which would be Hermes Trismegistus. And that's an emerald tablet. And it was said to say it had all of the events of mankind stored in this temperate. So it was like a super or, or like an ultra uber computer, as it were. But it was intelligent through emerald now as i said before certain stones have very very good properties they can disperse emfs that's why we're using some of the some stones absorb energy others put it out as it were okay so clearer stones sort of emanate energies whereas darker stones tend to generally disperse it and that's not always the case but it's the majority of the cases something like black quartz, oh sorry, or yeah, you could go black tourmaline, very good for a lot of people to do holistic work. <clears throat> it absorbs a lot of um, a negative energy in, in a room, say if you're doing a lot of massage or healing work, things like that. Or you may use um, uh, shungite is very, very good for balancing water, cleansing water, purifying water because of its crystalline structure is C60. It's a, it's a carbon molecule and where carbon life forms. So it's interesting, you're actually learning, or, or I, I believe you're learning after we meditate that a lot of energy about minerals and, and layers of our bodies and all these different uh, aspects that we can work with because we carry them all and certain things will be uh, more effective for you. Um, quartz, once again, it has me um, sisters and brothers, okay? Like a golden colored quartz would be citrine. Citrine, very good for attracting um, 
things such as abundance. There are different types of quartz crystals. There are generators, Isis crystals, so on and so forth. There's been books and books and books published on them. Um, There's also agate, is of the quartz family as well. And if you looked at the agate, generally what we used to call thunder eggs, and the thunder eggs, you cut them in half and sometimes you get the layers <coughs> attributed, like, like an embryo, like the layers, it was like a, like a liquid stone. And inside, you usually get a geode of quartz or sometimes amethyst. Amethyst is the violet version of quartz crystal. Amethyst is very, very plentiful now, but it never ever used to be only four or five centuries ago until they found the Great Mother Lodes and that right through Brazil, you know, and Argentina, which was said to be, of course, Montezuma's treasure that Whereas only the, the Pope could only wear the purple ring, which was an amethyst. And amethysts were more prized than, say, diamonds. Oh, you're going to do your meter? That's it. Yeah, I can see you sort of. That's it. And that's what I'll be back. Okay. Do you want to go to this door? Oh, can you get it? Oh, I'll lock it. Yeah, that might be better. Are you down that way? Okay, cool. Thanks very much. Anyone else have any issues with the meters and stuff like that? Is that all? Just so I don't want anyone to stress or that's good. Can she? No, thanks. Okay. Thanks so much. Right. I'll just, um... uh, this one here, that'll be a turquoise, oh hang on, that one? That's like, that's a turquoise. There's about 50 varieties of turquoise. Okay, so yeah, they go from greens to blues, and yep, no worries. <laughs> if you really want to get into stones, I'll, I'll tell you about it, okay? Some of the most expensive stones in the world are very rare. Like you have um, red emerald, which is called Big Spot. It's worth a lot of money. Red emerald, yeah, it's called Big Spot. It's worth about, oh, I want to pump, oh yeah, 1500, yeah, to, I don't know, about, yeah, up to 1.5 million uh, uh, carat. Depends. You got like tanzanites, okay, there's blues. Um, Big Spite is a very rare crystal, okay. And then you have, um, you got different sapphires too. My friends are a high end jeweler. So you got violet saffs and yellow saffs. Basically, any spectrum, if you understand how stones work, you can get any color in the spectrum of it. Like the oh, heliodores and that. But once again, this is only just a quick overview, all right. So, some of the most expensive stones in the world, like would be Alexandrite, you know, well, that goes around 150 grand to probably like, I don't know, 1.5 mil a carat, you know, Alexandrite, but stones you've never even heard of, you know. This, it's, a, it's a phenomenal red. It's a, like a, not a red red, it's like a, like a maroni purple. It's very expensive. Um, it's just when you get into high-end stones that most people have never even heard of, you know, like there's some really tricked up stones blue diamonds and things. But also with the stone, the, 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 the crystalline structure is important. There's six main, I think that there's a seventh one, but mainly six main structures to crystals. I think I've got more in this uh, presentation. I'm only gonna go do a quick overview here because there's so much. Um, do people dye stones? Uh, yeah, they do, yeah, that's huge. Yeah, citrine is probably one of the most uh, common that they die, okay. Um, well, so they, don't, they don't die citrine, basically. So they usually cook it. It's amethyst. Yeah. If you cook it at about 800 degrees, it goes to that golden color. But you can spot it really easy if you know what you're looking for. It's like stones. You, also call, um, you can um, say citrines kill people. No, 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 they don't. No, <laughs> citrines <laughs> don't. No, no, die. People die some stones. No, no, that's a real citrine. That's real. That's a real. Yeah, yeah you're saying do, do people die stones and they get die. No, you die as in color. They do color. They do color. They, they may have the crystalline structure, but it might not be of a high quality. Okay, so no, no, no citrines are very, very good. Just that one. So, just go. Just go. Citrines enlighten people. Okay, that's good. Blue topaz is another one they cook too. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a real one there, and I, sh I can point at a, a cooked one. Okay, I love blue topaz. It's yeah, one of too. yeah. It's got good energies. There's aquamarines. There's a lot of semi precious stones, and there's a lot of other precious stones that we can get to, and they they're very much used. Um, uh, there was a lot of uh, stones used for industrial purposes and things too as well. We'll get into that. Let's go. Um, and the difference between a mineral and a gemstone. Because about 3,500 minerals, just basically as an overview, but there's probably only about 200 major precious stones, okay? So that's all right. How'd you go? You all good, Ski? I hope so. Okay. You're right. supposed to park there for four hours. Oh, okay. Do you need to move or? Okay. Um, where do you move to? Yeah, okay. Yeah, where do you move to? Yeah, exactly. That's all right. Okay, good. Just. Uh, okay, I'll sort of be looked after. But they're, I mean, we, they most, they're, they're cutting us a bit of slack at the moment, aren't they, here? Because of the... No, not necessarily. Oh, no. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, and one with a high-powered assault rifle with a sniper scope? Okay, we'll just... I got a $100 fine a few weeks ago. Here? Yeah. Oh, no. I've parked along that one, closer to the hospital. Okay, yeah. Did you run out of time or did you not pay for the... Oh, I forgot to go back, yeah. Right. Oh, God, that's what I'm saying. Like, if anyone just, you know, make sure you, you go back. Isn't this, me talking about spiritual energy here, if, you know, it's like you still got money running out there. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, where were we? As I say, there was many different types of stones. This is just, um, this is just an overview where we talk about different stones and how they're plentiful. So quartz crystal, that they worked out, <coughs> Um, was was intelligent a long time ago. So quartz um, is generally very prolific in such other stones as granite and sandstone. Okay, granite and sandstone. And the colours, gems appear coloured due to some of the white light being absorbed within the mineral structure. Most gems are coloured by a limited number of metals present either as impurities or constituents of the gem's atomic structure. I know it's a lot there. So most of the colouring comes from chromium, iron, manganese, titanium and copper. For, I won't go into that too much. Obviously, if it's got a lot of iron, it's going to be more to a red kind of stone, okay? You know, something like your rubies and things like that. And a lot of these stones have got a lot of interesting aspects to it. Um, we'll, we'll get into that. Obviously, we'll have to do a, a larger workshop on, on these things and we can do it. We have some interesting specimens for sale. Okay, okay. And the intensity is actually, it's chromium which produces the intense red of ruby and the brilliant green of emerald. That's an emerald and that's a ruby and that's a sapphire. And garnet, spinel, sapphire, peridot and chrysoberyl, it is iron that's responsible for the more subtle red blue and yellow colors. So it's, it's minerals coming together, working. So it's intelligent design. Okay, so the best sapphires are colored naturally by both titanium and iron, whilst copper is responsible for the blue-green of say turquoise and malachite, right? It's only a, a basic run over. So turquoise is very, very popular. It was very, very popular in the 70s again. It, was, it flourishes, um, it grows naturally in the, uh, the American Midwest, okay? So it's a very, very popular stone with um, Native, Americans, yeah. Native Americans. Yes, absolutely. I have a, I have a Navajo bracelet myself. Um, and then, well, it was very, very popular in Egypt as well, okay? Turquoise is very, very popular in Egypt. It has a, a lot of copper, copper and silicate in there as well. But, um, and also it goes through from these incredible colours. It has a, a very, very large variety, like opals, and there's different types of sapphires and very, very rare sapphires, like different types of diamonds, different types of rubies. And these sorts of stones, some of them are very, very sought after, you know, for example. And the Queen's Scepter is a very, very powerful diamond, okay? Very, very powerful, largest diamond in the world, I believe. Probably been superseded now. Was it the Cullinid? No, the Hope, Hope Diamond, I think it is, isn't there? And that's got a phenomenal story about it, okay? Yes. I've got it. I've got it in a book form, and it will blow your mind. Anyone that touched that stone had bad yeah. stuff happen to them, okay? Yeah, bad stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because the energy of a size, there's over 500 carats, a diamond of that size. So, look, you've got to be pure. When they used to carry certain massive stones, they used to call them in China or on the Burma Trail, 
the golden child. They'd have to get a child who's innocent. So therefore, their negative emotions wouldn't affect the stones so much. And they used to have them on these caravans and obviously they'd get raided. The same thing happened on the spice route, you know, out of uh, Asia as well. And certain stones. So I'll, we'll talk about if we do like a, a full culture, um, you know, uh, workshops on the stones, I'll tell you about the things that happen to certain people on certain stones. Same with some of the big rubies and that by the sultans and that out of India and what happened and it creates massive energy because the power of that stone is ridiculous, okay? It's off the Richter. So anyone that touches it, if you think bad thought, which actually starts to happen later in your life when you're really ascending a lot of this work, you gotta be very careful about your thoughts and energies and emotions because you can manifest stuff very, very quickly, you know? So, yeah. um, so some of the great remote viewers and so on and so forth because you're actually doing it. So if you're doing that and you've got this amplifier like that stone, that diamond, it's just gonna, just turn it into a, like a, an absolute maelstrom in no time, you know? So anyway, I have a lot on that as well. So we will go into that. We're just gonna talk about these stones. That's a, an emerald, okay? Obviously there's silica and pyrite around it, it grows. Now most stones grow in a hexagonal shape, like plants, they grow in hexagonal. There's a natural hex. Hexagon, okay, so it's, um, we call it in the Kabbalah, Hermetic Kabbalah, it's the six, it's the six side and it represents the sun in the tree of life, so it's six sides. <clears throat> Pento is five, but this is six. So emeralds and rubies all grow to this. I mean, obviously, if you've seen like shards or pieces that are tumbled or, or cut, they're, they're not carrying that, but it's just that sort of shape. So there's a six point star, okay? So when they cut them, that's of course Metatron's cube, but I'm just showing you that as a six point star, as it were. Six is sacred in a lot of the ancient texts, okay? But it's not the complete number. It's the six, the hex. You get good, you can see that in 3D, okay? Yes. Octahedron, they're an octahedron. They grow an octahedron. Yes. Is how they produced is through, um, isn't it through condensation of lots of... Um, Stuff. Vegetation, isn't it? Uh, carbon, yeah, they're pure carbon. Yeah, and they're formed at ridiculously high temperatures, okay? high, high temperatures. Um, once again, I'd, I'd need a while to explain about how that, yeah, they find them in uh, kimberlite pipes. South Africa is the greatest producer of diamonds as well as gold and that as well. More on that later. And um, they are formed at ridiculously high temperature, okay. Is that a ruby, is it? That is a ruby, yeah, I think it is, or it's that, I got a rare one, I think it was uh, the red emerald on saying they're very rare, but I won't go into it. Okay, this is, um, a ruby growing in zeocyte. See the six point structure coming through? Hex, okay. Remember we said before about the shape of usually a lot of your snowflakes or you, your ice crystals, they grow in six, okay. And just so you get a real feel, six is intelligent design, okay, the hex. That's why it's important, you know, wicker and witchcraft, they're going about the hex, cast a hex and the hex is very strong, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Right, hexagon, hexagram. So that's smart. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes. There's, that's that's been going a long time, and it's come back into fashion again the last 15, 20 years. There's a lot of people that do gem elixirs. Yeah, they do it. Gem elixirs, exactly. Um, take on the energy of the gym. Yeah, it would, because you're actually immersing the water. So it